you haven't mentioned or we haven't discussed on the um, uh, efforts the incumbent government is making. Uh, we need to reframe that narrative. Ethiopia is in fact a victim. So the narrative has to change to uh, uh, so that Ethiopia presents itself as a victim of all these uh, policies and practices over the years. Over the years, it is a victim because it has not been in, or mm -hmm. uh, it has not been allowed to use its God-given resource for the benefit of millions of Ethiopians. I mean, this is a country that has uh, a history of recurrent famine, right? It, yeah. it doesn't have that kind of history. But a country which is blessed with all these kinds of resources is suffers from um, this recurrent, multiple, destructive famines. Uh, the, the lack of this basic, I mean, one of the biggest responsibilities of any government is the ability to feed. Mm -hmm. The ability to feed its citizens. Yeah. And not to have that ability to feed your citizens is is a, is a failure is 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 a, is a show of total failure mm -hmm. on the part of governments on the part of leaders you cannot have a mandate to rule if you don't have the capacity to feed that's basic yeah basic and so this this is the situation of famine and poverty and lack of development and the development is not sustainable especially when you have 100 more than 100 million people more than 70 of 70% 70 of which is young, mm. right? Exactly. Uh, below 30 years of age, uh, who need employment. Uh, when, when you have that kind of uh, challenge, an increasing population, especially an increasing use, use population, you need to create a solution. You need to create an economy that is growing, uh, and you need to utilize, optimal utilization of all of the resources you have, including water. And we're talking about a by the Nile River this time around, but Ethiopia has many transboundary rivers. There are a number of transboundary rivers. So the focus is only on a by, but there are a number of other transboundary river systems. So we need to use all those, all those river systems. So. We need to change the narrative first, that Ethiopia cannot sustain, cannot continue with a history of poverty, famine, underdevelopment yeah. uh, as a victim. Mm -hmm. So the change the narrative is important. Mm -hmm. Another narrative is this relationship between Ethiopia and Egypt in particular, or Egypt, Sudan and Ethiopia, is built on the principle of win-lose, um, uh, win-lose politics, zero-sum politics, mm -hmm. that Egypt's benefit comes at the expense of Ethiopia's loss. That is the kind of understanding mm -hmm. implicit in the policies so far. And so that principle needs to change. And we need to have a, a new kind of relationship, a win-win relationship. A win relationship, partnership. Ethiopia is not an enemy. Ethiopia is not a threat. Ethiopia is a victim, but Ethiopia can become a partner. Ethiopia can become a partner. So partnership is a very important principle that needs to shape a new narrative, a new relationship. Another is equitability and sustainability. What Ethiopia is demanding is not an exclusive control over the river the Nile River, the Abai River, no. Never in its history has Ethiopia demanded total, complete, exclusive control over the, the, the Nile River. Not, mm -hmm. not any time in its history. What Ethiopia demands, and that's why it is very legitimate, what Ethiopia demands is equitable share, an equitable mm -hmm. share to those God-given God right. Yeah. Let's use it. Mm -hmm. Acutably. Let's share it acutably. That's it. And what's wrong with that? Mm -hmm. And let's use it sustainably. Mm -hmm. Sustainably. Because uh, uh, the study showed that by 2018, the, the water, the, the Abba River, would, would significantly dry. Mm -hmm. 
mm. because of changing ecosystem, changing environment, the global warming as an impact, climate change as an impact. So the Alba River we know today will probably will not exist in, let's say, in 50, 60 years from now. So sustainable use of water is critical. So sustainably and equitably uh, using these natural... And uh, when it comes to sustainability, you know, uh, Egyptians are not known for that. Meaning there is a study that shows uh, I have, uh, meaning the, 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 the amount of water we use, we Ethiopians use and the Egyptians use is so different. Uh, I, for instance, um, let me see uh, if I have it. Mm -hmm. mm. Okay, yearly water used mm. in uh, in in per, in uh, between Ethiopia and Egypt. Ethiopia uses ten ten million five hundred fifty thousand liters. Mm. Egypt uses seventy seven million five hundred thousand liters. Right? Huge difference, yeah. Huge difference between ten mm. million and seven mm -hmm. million. Mm. Per annum per year. Yeah. Right. Uh, and then access to electricity. Mm. Ethiopia, uh, uh, this is 2017. Mm. Ethiopians' access to electricity is 44 percent. Mm. 44 percent. Egypt has Egypt access is 100 percent. Mm. Total complete access to electricity. Mm. But Ethiopia has only 44 percent of access to electricity. Uh, gross uh, national income. Ethiopia is one thousand seven hundred eighty-two dollars. Mm -hmm. Egypt ten thousand seven hundred forty-four dollars. This is mm -hmm. a different. It's a big difference. Yeah, it's a big, a huge it's difference. A big yeah. Difference. Poverty level. Mm -hmm. Poverty level. Population in multi-dimensional poverty by person. Ethiopia is eighty-three point five percent poverty level. Egypt has five. Mm -hmm. So five percent of poverty level in Egypt. 83% of poverty level in Ethiopia. Mm -hmm. So this is not sustainable. Yeah. Right? Whether mm -hmm. it is in terms of the poverty level mm -hmm. of countries, our access to electricity, our use of water, it is not sustainable. Mm -hmm. So sustainability is so important. The key to yeah. is important. Sustainability is important mm -hmm. when we talk about the river. Yeah. And then uh, another is we need to have a trans boundary. Uh, Agreement, mm -hmm. transboundary agreement for an equitable, sustainable share of the Nile River. We don't have that. Oh, we don't have that. We don't have. I was, that. Just, I was no. assuming by default we have that agreement. No, but, we don't. Uh, oh my it, God. it can go by a minute. Some people say that 1959 or 1929 oh, or That's in favor of uh, Egypt, as you said, in right? Favor of Egypt. And mm -hmm. Egypt has uh, has rejected that multiple times. Mm. since uh, the, the time of the emperor. So we need to have a new kind of transboundary agreement with the riparian countries involving not just Egypt and the Sudan, mm. Egypt and the Sudan. And it's fascinating to see, uh, and it's very saddening to see uh, a treaty that affects the, 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 the lives of millions of Ethiopians uh, being signed without their knowledge, without their participation, and at their own, ex at their expense. The experience. So that was 1959, and uh, this, the argument that was being deliberated uh, recently and uh, and ended uh, without success is a kind of uh, a replay, a replay. Uh, what I, what had happened in the past is a kind of a repetition uh, of uh, the kind of the 1959 argument, uh, which is. Uh, um, which is fundamentally unjust, uh, unjust for Ethiopia. Um, and the international community, uh, may, the international community, uh, you can see in, in different ways in which the international community sided uh, uh, with, with Egypt uh, or abandoned Ethiopia. Uh, failed to defend Ethiopia's legitimate
cause, uh, legitimate rights uh, over the over the river, uh, for a number of reasons, uh, in many ways. And uh, one of which that I mentioned at the beginning was uh, because Egypt is a priority for uh, for the West. Egypt is a priority country for Western nations like the U.S. or European nations. Uh, so there is a there is a history of many uh, favoritism, preferential treatment uh, of e Egyptian interests in the global in uh, globally on a global uh, platform, um, and this is only one one demonstration. And what we have seen over the last few months is only one dem demonstration of that history. So there is a long history of that, in which uh, there is a goodwill shown to Egypt, but at the expense of other countries, and especially countries like Ethiopia, when it comes to the, uh, the, uh, the Nile River. Uh, Ethiopians eventually abandoned, uh, decided to abandon the, the negotiation because it proved to be detrimental detrimental to the urban interest. Many of the Egyptians wanted to preserve a kind of exclusive control over the Nile River. Meaning they wanted to maintain the 1959 kind of understanding uh, with Ethiopia. Uh, they are not, many they are not liberated, you can say, from this mentality, a kind of a zero-sum game that we lose kind of uh, relationship with Ethiopia. Uh, the benefit of Ethiopia comes, I mean, the benefit of Egypt comes at the expense of Ethiopia. That kind of a paradigm that defines Egyptian approach towards Ethiopia cannot work, I mean, it cannot continue. Uh, but there were attempts to maintain that, preserve it as much as possible in these most recent negotiations in the, in here in the US. Um, I think and now the Egyptians have finally decided to return to the negotiation mm -hmm. and probably somewhere in Africa, uh, may not, probably may not be here in the US. Mm -hmm. But uh, a, a negotiation on the Abba River needs to recognize mm -hmm. that the win-lose zero-sum game is not tenable, it's not sustainable. Mm -hmm. What is needed uh, uh, for the greater good of Egypt itself, Ethiopia, the entire region is a new kind of relationship uh, which is based on win-win, mutually beneficial partnership, cooperation. Uh, that is the, the, this is the precondition for peace, prosperity and stability in the region but also in these countries, Ethiopia or Egypt or the Sudan. So there is a need for rethinking, a fundamental rethinking of Egyptian policy as far as Ethiopia is concerned, as far as their idea of the Nile is concerned, their policy towards the dam, the great Ethiopian Renaissance dam is concerned. And there is a lot to be done by non-state actors, meaning the civilian, the civil society, the Ethiopian civil society in the country itself, but also in the diaspora, mm -hmm. uh, including intellectuals, political leaders, every Ethiopian from every sector of society, from all walks of life, can be a part of this significant project. This is a millennium project. Yeah. And, uh, and I, mean, I cannot imagine an Ethiopian being silent mm -hmm. uh, when a matter of such magnitude, mm -hmm. generational significance is being decided. Yeah.